like stealing in video games. In video games, don't tell me if you like stealing in real life, I don't wanna be an accessory. There are actually quite a few titles that allow players to steal from one another. Their servers are true anarchies where something belongs to someone for only as long as they can hold on to it. Powerful weapons, currency, and other items that players take hours to collect can be yours in a moment if you just learn how to steal them. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 video games that sneakily let you steal from other players. Number 10, Rust. Rust is the unequivocal king of gameplay that's built around messing with other players. The game allows you to commit every single crime you can imagine, from just raiding other players' bases and taking all their stuff, to killing people just for the thrill of it, just to watch them die. Sneaky types can decide to steal from other players on the server by breaking into their safe houses when they're away. However, if a more direct approach sounds more up your alley, you can also rob them at gunpoint, or simply kill them and loot their corpse. More creative players may even be able to come up with all sorts of ways of extorting other players' hard work to take their winnings for themselves. Really, as far as crime goes, the sky's the limit. The world of Rust is your oyster, your bloody and morally bankrupt oyster. Well, so long as you manage to survive the first few hours where stronger and more experienced players rob and steal from you, after all, somebody needs to be the server's sacrificial lamb. Number nine, Project Zomboid. Project Zomboid is a survival game set in zombie-infested Kentucky. On top of its solo mode, the game also offers up a bunch of multiplayer servers. And as you can imagine, this is a zombie apocalypse, so laws and morality don't play in so much. The game features a handful of mechanics that allow players to take each other's things. The right equipment and skills will allow you to break into other people's bases, unlock their doors and chests, and even hotwire their vehicles. On the other hand, Project Zomboid also has quite a few means of protecting yourself from theft, such as alarms and locks that you can install all over your base. Some craftier players can also use materials to set up traps for any potential burglars. For this reason, Project Zomboid's multiplayer experience is like one big chaotic game of cat and mouse. In fact, the dynamic of stealing and chasing after thieves can be so exciting, you almost forget the game is supposed to be about surviving a zombie apocalypse. Number eight, Meet Your Maker. Meet Your Maker is a multiplayer first person shooter where you'll build booby trapped safe houses or crack into other people's booby trapped safe houses trying to get or protect certain artifacts. Skullduggery is built into the core gameplay of Meet Your Maker. Knowing how to sneak past security and traps is necessary if you want to get your hands on your rival's goodies, or if you're looking for the best way to safeguard your own. Putting this knowledge into practice is possibly the greatest rush of excitement and adrenaline that Meet Your Maker has to offer. Each time you outfox a trap or find flaws in its design, you know it's not just the game that you've managed to outmaneuver. There's also the real human being that made it. To make your devilish heist feel even better, the artifact you steal from someone is actually worth resources taken from the owner's pool that you can use to buy better equipment for your base. Yes, the only way to thief-proof your base is to steal from other people. Now that's what you call a self-sufficient economy. Number seven, scum. Now for the uninitiated, scum is basically rust if rust decided to eliminate its last couple shreds of humanity and just 100% give in to its scumbag potential. In the game, you play as a prisoner trapped on an island as part of a Hunger Games-like show, and as you may imagine, this means nothing's off the table. The game includes crimes like murder and cannibalism, so stealing should technically be the least of your problems, and yet the mechanics connected to taking other people's things are so advanced, neglecting them is a grave mistake. Possession is nine-tenths of the law, and that's the first time I've really thought about that. That seems like a lot. Anyway, Scum knows this really well, so if it's not nailed down, who's to say it's not yours? Players can steal each other's weapons, food, clothes, credit cards, even vehicles to either keep them for themselves or sell them to a trader for quick profits. It doesn't matter if it's locked, hidden, or protected by the owner. One way or another, most items in Scum are traded from hand to hand, and one of the parties involved is usually not too happy about it. Number six, Fallout 76. Despite its catastrophic launch and all the bugs and glitches and everything else, Fallout 76 does have one thing going for it, and that's interactions with other players. One of the best features of the game is the ability to construct your own base wherever you want on the map. The base can generate resources for you and act as a safe house for storing your most precious items. Well, except if you don't safeguard it properly, your safe house will be more like a piggy bank for other players to steal from. You see, Fallout 76 allows players to access each other's bases with or without the owner's consent. Most locked areas inside your safe house can still be broken into by other players if they have the lock picking skill, and anything you haven't marked as personal can just be nicked. 
From crop fields to water purifiers and even item filled containers, as long as you forget to set them as your private stash, other players can break into them and steal anything they want. Of course, some players don't mark things for private use on purpose because the only thing more exciting than being a thief is setting up a trap for one. Number five, Grand Theft Auto Online. It shouldn't surprise anyone that a game called Grand Theft Auto would allow its players to steal from one another. What can be shocking, however, even to Grand Theft Auto players is the extent to which you can take things that aren't yours within the game. The base GTA Online experience provides a player with a few options for robbing the rest of the server. The simplest forms of thievery involve beating other players up to loot money off their bodies and temporarily running away with their car by sneaking inside and stepping on the gas. On higher levels, you can even call NPCs to mug specific players for you to steal upwards of 10 grand. However, these base game features only scratch the surface of GTA Online's illicit capabilities. Specialized role-playing servers are able to take this a step further by creating dedicated criminal professions for their players, including customized mechanics for things like hot wiring and lockpicking. The extent and complexity of stealing in GTA Online depends purely on your own preferences and what kind of role-playing servers you manage to find. It can be a refreshing change of pace after hours of robbing brainless NPCs to rob, you know, a real person, digitally. Digitally. Number four, Conan Exiles. The world of Conan Exiles is a brutal place, as you should expect, given it's like a barbarian wasteland where nobody's wearing clothes. Most interactions between players either end with one party getting murdered or having all of their things stolen. Thieves and robbers run rampant on pretty much every server in the game, even among the members of the same clan. If you think the scoundrel life is for you, you can easily join their honorless ranks by learning how to find the perfect target to steal from. The most common prey in Conan, and I guess this makes sense, but it sounds really sad, is the new players who haven't quite learned how to protect themselves yet. Their bases are easy to break into, their chests are open for pilfering, and their helpless pockets are perfect for robbing in broad daylight. Losing all your stuff to more experienced players can be painful, but on the other hand, once you go through it, you'll have all the knowledge you need to take things from other newbies as well. Or you could help them protect themselves against other people who would take their things. But let's be honest, you're gonna do the first thing. Number three, Escape from Tarkov. Escape from Tarkov is a unique multiplayer first person shooter where your goal isn't solely to defeat other players, but rather to escape with as much loot as possible. The game's primary mode drops you and other players on a map of your choosing and sets an extraction point for you that you need to reach with as much gear and valuables as you can find. Now you technically don't need to kill other players and they don't need to kill you, but if you do kill them, you get to steal their stuff and vice versa so you can imagine what happens. Most Tarkov runs consist of setting up ambushes on other people and looking for an opportunity to nab their valuables off their bodies. It's an interesting experience seeing as stealing is an unwritten rule of the game. On the other hand, robbing your fellow mercenaries totally makes sense as there's only so much gear to go around. Number two, Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves is a multiplayer game that allows you and your friends to experience what it's like to be a greedy pirate on a quest for infamy and booty. The pirate theme game revolves around all manner of illicit ways of gaining wealth on the high seas, including raiding other people's vessels. If you've ever wondered what it would be like to scour the seven seas like Blackbeard and other legends of the golden age of piracy, Sea of Thieves offers a rather in-depth, if cartoonish, version of the experience. Naval battles, boarding attacks, and plunder galore are the essence of the game, and being able to do it all against other players only bolsters the experience. The competitive aspect of raiding each other, along with the fact that you're actually taking the gold from someone real and not just a generic NPC, make you feel as if you're a true scourge of the sea. Well, that is until someone in your crew accidentally puts a hole in the boat and then it starts sinking, or it gets tipped over by a big sea creature. The sea truly is a cruel mistress. Number one, Dark and Darker. Dark and Darker is a PvP VE fantasy roguelike similar to Escape from Tarkov. The game throws you into a procedurally generated dungeon alongside your friends and other players, and your goal is to escape the place with as much loot as possible, either by working together with your fellow adventurers or stabbing them in the back. You can also stab them in the back. Working together in Dark and Darker can be useful, but getting more loot at the end of your run is even better. And since you don't need other people, including your own party members, to escape, you can probably imagine the amount of betrayal and treachery that happens on an average run. And there are plenty of clever ways for you to lighten the pockets of your temporary allies. 
From fooling them into walking into a death trap, betraying them right at the end, or ambushing them when they've just finished looting a room, there are plenty of ways to take advantage of your friends and take their loot, which are only really limited by your moral code and ingenuity. Just remember you're not the only one seeking to profit from other people's demise. Your ally is probably also waiting for the opportunity to take your hard-earned treasure. It's just a matter of who gets to do it first.